on this life flight. An early morning car crash leaves a family devastated. It's not supposed to be like that. You know, he's my baby. An injured yachty triggers a high-stakes rescue. We're pushing this boat around, big stuff. Yeah, I know. It's chasing um, me. And a head-on collision leaves a cyclist fighting for her life. It's extensively damaged and cracked as she's hit the car and uh, been dragged across the bonnet and down the road. An emergency strike. Time, distance, and the men and women of life flight can be the difference between life and death. This is life flight. When it comes to flying the length and breadth of New Zealand helping to save lives, preparation is essential. Weight balance is all good. Got some discharge strips. Just making sure it's all good. At the Wellington base, First Officer Danielle Aitchison is preparing for a mercy dash to New Plymouth. Just listening to any noises, any noises that maybe shouldn't be there. Um, just alerts us to anything that may be wrong. It always pays to be quite thorough and sort of make sure that you're happy with everything. Specialist medical care will be provided by flight nurse Jane Shepherd. Uh, so we're heading off today in the life flight plane up to collect a 27-year-old man who, by the sounds of it, has had a car accident last night. Um, don't know a lot of details at the moment, but I know that he's intubated, um, so he's got a tube that's helping him breathe. I think it's still early days. And better caption. Is on. It's complete. Clear locks and caps my side. Starting. In charge of the flight is Captain Alistair Matthews. And, uh, 50 knots. Uh, That's check my man. control. Your control. Uh, Police turned up, knocked on the door, 6.30 this morning, and he asked uh, if I owned a blue Isuzu Moo. I said yes. He says, well, it's been in a serious car accident. I had a fair idea it was Tyrone, my son, and um, burst out crying first, and then... Um, and, and all the police were saying it's serious. Initial assessments have given Tyrone's partner, Rachel, hope that Wellington specialists may be able to save his life. We have to wait and see what the CT scan says, and he's fighting away. Also on the mission to New Plymouth are flight doctor Travis Pereira and crewman Steve Reeve. I just give these embos a call. OK. Yeah, good morning, it's Steve from Life Flight Wellington, yeah. The brain's only got so far that it can swell, so it's kind of a closed box. If the pressure's not relieved, is um, that the brain swells, and then the only way it can go is down into the spinal cord. Um, unfortunately, what that does is cuts off the blood supply and causing irreversible damage and death. It's a busy morning, and back at Wellington Base, Life Flight's second life-saving machine is needed. A man is injured and trapped on a yacht. Roger, lifting off, uh, Captain Sherman. It's one of the harder frosts I've seen around here, actually. Coming to the stranded yachty's aid is pilot Harry Stevenson, crewman Logan Taylor, and intensive care paramedic Nigel Stevens. All we've got at this stage, uh, information's limited, but all we have really is just that he has a hip injury from a fall. Boats can be uh, one of the trickier winches, um, depending on the size. Uh, this is a yacht, so it has masts, which, uh, which can be quite a hazard at times. I'm not actually too sure of the size, but I'm just thinking that it's pretty small because there's only one guy on board. Yeah. And it's a sloop, so there'll be lots of rigging. There he is, I've got him in sight. A small yacht named Distance has a limited deck area, complicating the winch operation. Distance, distance, this is West Bank Helicopter, Channel 160, copy over. Yeah, copy, yeah, over. A quick briefing, we'll be deploying a high line onto the deck. Just make sure you're clear of the high line when it was deployed. Don't pull the rope too tight, and don't put, don't tie the rope off to anything uh, on your vessel. Kind of set up the wrong side of there, uh, but I'll just 
point in straight at the back basically and we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, OK, roger that. Are you ready for a highline deploy? Uh, oh, I am indeed. Uh, so to me, there's a guideline right in the middle, isn't there, at the back? Yeah. The wire that runs from the top of the mast to the deck halves the space the team have available to work in. OK. Easy right one, right one. And find the high line. High line is on the deck, is in the cabin. Get back, come back to your target. The Westpac rescue helicopter is hovering at the same height as the mast, but a wrong move could cause a devastating collision. OK, so hold on quite tight to the high line there. Just OK. Keep this moving. I don't know if you're going to hear you. Okay, we've got the barge coming on to the winch. Bang, that's good. That's good. That's good. He's got a desk up on that line line. He's got a tight ass. I can't not let go of it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, there's the Plymouth coming up ahead of us. Request the visual if you're happy. Put the 0-1 with the visual approach. Meanwhile, the fixed wing team have made good progress on their way to retrieve car crash victim, Tyrone. Hi, it's Jane, one of the flight nurses calling from Wellington. Just ringing to let you know, we've just landed at Taranaki Airport. Um, we're just about to load into the ambulance and we'll be coming in to see you. Is there any change with the patient at the moment? No, OK. Local doctors don't have the neurosurgical expertise necessary to make a full assessment of the patient, and the team are unsure of what they will find. When we get there, um, we should do, try and get a blood gas sent off as soon as possible. Because so if we're going to give him mannitol or strong salt, we need to see his sodium. Dad Perry and Mum Bernadette have rushed to be near their son after receiving the news no parent wants to hear. When Perry rang me up and then all I did was just cry. It's not a real good feeling. Uh, we're just hoping that boy's going to be strong enough and pull out of it. 27 year old Tyrone is a 6 foot 7 gentle giant who is the heart of his tight knit family. You did, I don't know, it's... I can feel it in my heart that there's a lot of love here and we're just hoping that that is going to help him pull for it as well. Watch power's on. OK, clear to be out. Yeah, clear to be out. Clear to be out. In the Marlborough Sounds, the life flight team are attempting to winch paramedic Nigel down to an injured yachty. OK, and we're attempting to come skip to the far side. We've pushed this boat around, big stuff. Yeah, I know, it's chasing um, me. Yeah, it's okay. Keep on forward, Harry. Forward, four. About as far forward as I can go. Three, two, one, stick in deck of this there. Getting them on the deck now. We've got them right in the corner. That was oh, I've oh, got the hook in hand. The high line's clear of the vessel, Lopes. Right to that. Mm -hmm. Durban Maritime's West Bank. We have winched our paramedic down onto the vessel. Uh, the patient's been assessed now. Roger, sir. We'll copy. Thank you, Evan. 65 year old Don was on his way back to the boat after feeding Wecker when he slipped in a stream and damaged his hip. Did you actually feel it pop out? No, I didn't. Don was in a logging vehicle accident and now has a set of artificial hips and knees. But recent x rays show one hip replacement is in danger of breaking apart. How are you looking time wise, Nigel? Uh, just wondering whether I put down somewhere and wait, or are you just about ready? We're just about ready. Okay. Right, let's get moving. If you lose sight of the vessel, you can actually start drifting quite quickly, and uh, it all turns to custard. The team will have to work in sync to get Nigel and Don off the deck without tangling the winch and the yacht's mast. Just trying to get this sort of fish into him. Well, well, let's start. We're just leaving the hospital now on our way back to the airport. Uh, we'll be with you in about uh, just over 20 minutes. 
Back in New Plymouth, the life flight team are focused on getting car crash survivor Tyrone to Wellington before pressure inside his skull causes more damage. On the scene his GCS was three, which is as low as it can be, meaning he's not responding to any anything, any stimulus, any pain. Um, without you know, getting him down to Wellington with life flight to the specialist, to the neurosurgical team, uh, could end up in a really bad scenario. Worst case scenario could be he won't survive. Tyrone's large family is travelling by road, but Dad Perry is flying with his son. It sounds like there's bits of blood, little specks of blood in his brain from where he's probably, when he's had the impact. The doctors are going to pop a little pressuring device into his head to see how tight his brain is. If it's high, then they may look at other ways of releasing the pressure in his brain. But again, it's just a wait and see, yeah, yeah, which is frustrating in itself. He's a big lad though, I tell you. Scans reveal Tyrone has a broken neck and every care has been taken to immobilise him. Kevin is secure, pre-take-off check yep. complete. Roger that. On the way. Remember what he said, what the ICU guy said about his airway when he directly visualised it? He didn't actually specify, he just said it was really difficult. It's been 12 hours since ambulance officers arrived at the crash scene to find the SUV on its side against a pole. Did you notice what his officer doing when he arrived in ED? Um, and we're not entirely sure why. Uh, it's kind of complicated because he's got a cervical spine injury or suspected before the scan. So you always treat it as a cervical spine injury, but that really limits um, the movement when they're trying to pop ventilate or an endotracheal tube in. We're just trying to work out what was the cause of the problems. Hello, oh, Jason, just, just asked me to remind you that we need a long roll out. I said, I'm sure you have forgotten. Perfect. OK, cheers. OK. Uh, Tyrone's still in a really serious um, condition, critical condition. We're not entirely sure how things will go. It's really a minute by minute thing at the moment. Hopefully pull through, you know, it's not as bad as what they think when they when they look at him and um, recover is quick and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll twist it around for you. There we go, there we go, hook and hand. Back above Derville Island in the Marlborough Sounds, the life flight team are attempting to winch injured sailor Don off his yacht. Stand up, stand up. Little clear of the boat, back and right here into your target. And winch it in. Just gotta bring him in here. Yeah, just go from the door here. Get the face on board. And clear to move off slightly from here. Roger. Good job there, guys. Good work, Eric. Very much. I'll just get our seat secured. That's the hit. Two more. How hard is it to give me a bit of pain relief? I can basically give you a uh, put a needle in your arm. Fire your nose. I can stretch out your nose. OK, Landon. Cabin's all right. And we're pretty much set secure in the back here, Harry. Very good. It has fight under a blow bar before we for the hospital capture one. We're already cleared out there, guys. Roger. Highly skilled team work has delivered Don to safety, but the extent of his injuries is still to be discovered, and the life flight team have another emergency on their hands. At the life flight base, reports have come through of a woman whose life is at risk. Pilot Mike Hall, crewman Logan Taylor and intensive care paramedic Aaron Hartle are the patient's best option if she is to survive. What we're off to is a car versus cyclist in Waikanae, which is about uh, 18 minutes flight time from now. And the person is apparently unconscious due to probably 
a head injury or a chest injury. So what I'm doing here is that we do a skilled where we paralyse and sedate the patient to uh, facilitate intubation if they're critically ill. We've had a confirmation from the team that RS fight is required. We have an RS fight paramedic who can meet you at Weka Park. Picking up a second qualified paramedic to help with the RSI, or rapid sequence induction, will improve the patient's chances, but the unscheduled stop could bring its own complications. Obviously we want to keep uh, people at a good distance to the helicopter. Sorry Mike, can I just interrupt you there? Hannah's just texted me saying there's a football game on, land at the south end of the park. Good as gold. Oh, a bit different for the kids' soccer game. Yeah, I've got people at one currently in Mana. Intensive care paramedic Hernan Holiday was on his way to work and is now thrown into the middle of a high-stakes mission. We've got a female that's a uh, car V cyclist and she's reported to be unconscious, unresponsive and the RSI's indicated. Just arrived in uh, landing that white car park now. Back at Wellington Hospital, neurosurgeons have inserted a bolt into Tyron's head to measure the pressure but spikes in the readings are causing concerns for senior registrar Lawrence Walker. Should we um, paralyse him? Um, Atricurium? The pressure's in the brain and we're come back down after this morning. Now they've come up um, without us doing anything, so it's a bit more concerning than the staying life, so... There are different things that can go inside the brain to increase the pressure, and the generalised pressure increase, that is concerning. So, I mean, it's just a number, but it's a number that makes us concerned. Scans reveal bruising on the frontal lobe, eight millimetres thick, but no new swelling. If he does continue to have problems with his pressure, there's a possibility that there's a space to drain some fluid from the brain. We'll get the, um, the formal report in the next half hour or so and have a chat to the family. Yeah. While neurosurgeons plan a course of action, Rachel and baby Torian spend some time with Tyrone. <laughs> The first Rachel knew of the accident was when a cousin in the police force knocked on her door. Pretty devastated. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Gut wrenching. I'm just praying for him. Just praying for him, eh, baby? Thank you. Doctors are preparing to insert a drain to remove fluid and lower the pressure inside Tyrone's skull but the outlook is worrying for consultant Alex Cerides. I think worst case scenario could be that the pressure in his brain continues to get worse and we're not able to control that with medication, um, in which case that would be very bad for Tyrone. Is that still want to do that? No, not now. It's good. OK. In the emergency department, paramedic Nigel is attempting to discover the extent of Yachty Don's injuries. Feeding the wild birds, the workers and that, and uh, coming back out last night in the afternoon and um, crossing the creek and slipped. And my hip went one way, I ended up lucky, there was a fair bit of water landed flat on my back in the creek. And um, the hip didn't come out of joint, but it was really painful and I thought the pain would go away, but it got worse. In Waikanae, the team have located critically ill cyclist Yvonne. The patient's in here and we're going to sort them out and then move into the helicopter. And the helmet's got essentially cracked. She's got a blown pupil on the, on the right. Intensive care paramedic Hannah Latter is caring for Yvonne, who flew over her handlebars when she hit the car. Are you scared? Yeah, I know you're scared. Okay, but we're here, we're going to take really good care of you. She doesn't require RSI, but Yvonne's extremely confused and her blown pupil is concerning. We do think she does have a, a head injury, so we're going to be loading her into the helicopter as soon as we can and fly her off to Wellington. Just why didn't have departed seat. How did she hit the car? Did the car pull out on you? I don't Okay. Do you know what day the weekend is today? There's a cyclist versus car. She's rolled over the bonnet and been dragged by the car. Her right pupil is blown. Uh, it's about five mil and non-reactive. Yeah. And she's got extensive damage to her helmet. It's 
also damaged and cracked through the base here. So that's been damaged as she's hit the car and uh, been dragged across the bonnet and down the road. Yvonne's family have been notified and the hospital team are prepped and ready to treat her worrying injuries. Meanwhile, Tyrone's family wait anxiously to discover if a drain inserted into his head will relieve the fluid buildup inside Tyrone's skull. The pressures have come down a little bit, so um, uh, fingers crossed um, that it's been a success and it will actually help control the pressure in his brain. You see uh, kids laying in bed with all the, all the stuff on wired up to every, all the machines and that, and you can't do nothing for young kids. Uh, it's not supposed to be like that. You know, he's my baby. In the recovery ward, badly injured cyclist Yvonne is suffering lost balance, headaches and can't see out of her right eye. I want to be able to see. Um, and I keep telling my right eye to open and it doesn't want to. I feel quite emotional right now. Quite emotional. But this won't beat me. I'm going to get back on my bike again. Nine months after being hit by a car, Yvonne is on her way to regaining her full eyesight and has started to cycle again. Tyrone was later woken from his induced coma and moved to a rehabilitation facility. Four months on, he's begun to speak and continues to improve. Injured yachty Don was relieved x-rays revealed there was no further damage to his false hips. He returned to his boat to wait for another hip replacement. The disasters that shaped our country. A catastrophic earthquake. Deadly influenza. An explosion in the mine. Find out what really happened from the people who were there. Why did you think the train crashed that day? I do believe that the driver was intoxicated. As familiar Kiwi faces retrace our darkest days. 21 innocent people lost their lives. In one's brand new series. I was sure I'd died and gone to hell. Descent from Disaster premieres Tuesday on One.